Good evening, I am Andrea Gennaro and uh, I first want to say thanks to the organization of the session of this station in general of the CAA and maybe it's too cold for me because I'm from Sicily but it's okay. So, the wider archaeological community is beginning to recognize the potential benefit employing computer aid analysis techniques which can help in rapidly classifying large area, high resolution archaeological prospection data. While the merits and the extent to which such approaches are applicable continue to be debated, the reality is that we now have the capability to produce so much data of such high spectral, spectral and temporal quality that it is becoming difficult to interpret it in all manner. Therefore, instead of rejecting the notion of computer aid detection of archaeological information, the goal should be to find ways in which we can use the techniques to our advantage, as informed by expert knowledge about the archaeological, the archaeological realm. In this study, we are going to discuss two different approaches to semi-automated feature extraction of information that are frequently used nowadays in the fields of archaeology and general image analysis pixel-based classification and object-oriented classification. In particular, we, we are going to evaluate the applicability of this method for the identification of archaeological feature using a multispectral dataset in the western slope of Etna, the European Itis Volcano, using, in addition, a post-dictive <coughs> approach. Uh, the select uh, case study is of great archaeological interest, as you can see, and it lies in the western slope of the European Itis active volcano. The mountain and the spectacular activity is rooted in the collective imagination and memory of modern Nazi inhabitants. So it is not surprising that Etna is the protagonist of numerous myths and legends since ancient times. Here you can see the famous philosopher Empedocle um, and also one of the most uh, destructive eruption of the Etna in 1669. Thanks to his great naturalistic interest from a geologic, floristic, vegetation and fauna point of view, the entire area belonging to Etna Park has been identified, has been identified by European units as a site of community importance. Uh, sorry. As a site of community importance. The final result is a unique landscape that includes elements from traditional human activities around the volcanic combination of volcanic peculiarities and specific geomorphological Etna characteristics. As you can see, Etna is also a UNESCO site since 2013. This is the geographical area for those who doesn't know about Sicily. This is a picture of the uh, specific volcanic landscape. And then, then just a few words about the archaeological evidence. Uh, systematic excavation undertaken by superintendents of Catania completed birth to life a dozen of circular and rectangular buildings, most of them dated to Byzantine area, are, are located in the southern edge of the district, not so far from the road. The remaining part of built in Greek times had been discovered near the modern Masseriedera, is the Italian name for farm Masseri. In addition, a wall structure made of lava block runs across the district for about two kilometers. Unfortunately, it's not easy to frame it chronologically and it's today object of study. However, some scholars proposed the lecture of the structure as a Byzantine fortification wall. The WorldView 2 satellite sensor provides panchromatic and multispectral data. The panchromatic sensor collects information with visible and near infrared and IR wavelengths. The multispectral the multispectral sensor acquires data in eight spectral band from coastal to NIR2. The WorldView 2, the WorldView 2 imagery products are available at different processing levels serving the needs of different users. The WorldView 2 data used for this study were acquired on April 19, 2013. In this research, in addition, the pan shepherding was performing using Orfer toolbox in QGIS. Now the the tools. The entire study was conducted using mainly free and open source software with a low cost logic that allows study of landscape using limited budget. 
In particular, the processing of the acquired data was performed with QGIS and this plugin. plugin. QGIS is a professional GIS application that probably everybody um, know. Uh, in addition, the, the Ecognition is a commercial software and it's the widely used commercial software for OBIA solution. However, open source products like RAS and Optins OBIA plugins have reached a stage we can now be used for OBIA to some extent. Classification techniques are commonly used in remote sensing and can consist of a set of measurement of different features in the so called feature space. Archaeological features linked to burial settlements are really complex and traditional techniques may not be so effective. Traces of archaeological remains include different features which cannot be characterized by any specific color or tone of grey in the image, but rather by their heterogeneity. Archaeological mark may be easy to extract in a visual photo interpretation process, but their heterogeneity makes their automatic or semi-automatic classification very complex and difficult. The pixel-based classification approach uses the smallest entity with an image, the pixel element or the pixel, in order to extract the future information in relation to one or more predefined classes. The aim of the pixel-based classification is to establish a peer review relationship with a certain class category based on the attribute information or its set and the special neighborhood. The classes have either been predefined by the investigator in the form of supervised classification approach or identified by the software in an unsupervised approach based on grouping the spectral property of the respective bands on the entire dataset. All the supervised pixel based approach seem to be successful for archaeological feature detection, whereby the, where the investigator used no sample area based on priori knowledge to train the classifier to recognize the sheet and boundary in the feature space. In this case, the training dataset are called region of interest. To begin our study, we identify, maybe you can see in the upper picture, we identify four classes for Roy shown in this image. One is taken from the wall structure, one from emerging archaeological structure called building one and two, a third from the floor of building four, and the last for building ten. That is the biggest stru structure in the area which are completely different spectral signature than the building one two. Over the years, a number of algorithms have been developed. Amaz analyzing the position of the raw pixel in the ND feature space, we see that they often overlap, and this is the reason why we use the minimum distance algorithm for our classification. The results allow us to classify emerging wall and structure especially, while other archaeological features were not con correctly detected. In particular, as you can see, Building 10 is clearly recognizable. It's here, maybe you can see. Also, because it's the biggest building and uh, it has a favorable conservation status. With regard to Building 3, it is possible to identify just the emerging northwestern wall on the left. Despite the modest dimension, the fact that this mostly buried building 4 is clearly recognizable, but at the same time, building 5, 6, and 9 cannot be easily distinguished from the surrounding lava rock mound. And finally, the wall structure in Santa Venera district is easy to recognize in the data also because of its length and wall thickness. To assess the occurrence of the automatically classified archaeological feature, a distinction had to be made between a proper recognition of feature and the special matching in comparison with the manual interpretation map. The pixel-based method was able to correctly classify about the 7% of the manually interpreted feature. A further analysis of this value, of this value shows that one of the main problems is the classification of small objects whose contrast to the surrounding environment is low. This is one of the most challenging problems, especially looking at our situation. First, archaeological buildings, as we have already seen, have a small dimension, considering that the biggest one is approximately just 100 square meters. And second, the material used for the construction of arts is not brick or Roman brick, but unfortunately lava stone. So, 
we have a solution where we were looking for wall and structure made by volcanic stone in a volcanic plateau. And then the object-based classification. In contrast to the pixel-based approach, an object-based analysis uses the entire image or data set and breaks it down into meaningful segments. Generally speaking, object orientation is a programming part based in the concept that the functions which are applied to data should be assigned to a certain object. Our analysis was designed specifically for archaeological purpose. Our primary goal was to distinguish vegetation from volcanic rock and in a second moment searching not for proper soil mark because it's a volcanic uh, landscape but trying to identify regular shape and dimension possibly linked to archaeological buildings. We already know where archaeological evidence are located because they have been already brought to light that we had seen years ago. In this way, a post-dictive approach, as already stated by scholars, allows us to evaluate instruments and techniques at our disposal. Segmentation step. Among the many algorithms provided by the Commission, multi-resolution segmentation is most used and famous one. The outcome of the algorithm is controlled by four parameters detected through a systematic trial and error approach validated by the visual inspection the quality of the output. Configuration of this parameter depends on the desired object to be segmented and at the same time segmentation does not have a unique solution. Changing the scale parameters in multi-resolution algorithm can cause different solutions. When the segmentation scale is not appropriate, the image can be under or over segmented. As mentioned above, again, selection of segmentation parameters is done based on trial and error method, which is the main hindrance to automatic object-based classification. The segmentation results have fundamental implication because they form uh, the basis of the subsequent classification. Here, classes are defined and each individual segment is assigned to a single class based on the employee target object. In the present case study, we have selected three classes, modern rock vegetation and uh, um, modern vegetation and rock, of course. Even the evaluation of the created classes can be an iterative uh, process. And this is a crucial point because it reveals the borderline between human interpretation and automatic classification. You see the classification. Final outcome I show it in the following uh, uh, image. The first, this one, the sh uh, shows final classification the selected area, while the second uh, displays the classification map obtained using the procedure of region merging. Regarding the archaeological buildings we have seen before, despite the dense vegetation in the complex environment, they were detected mostly correctly. Building 10 especially, with this peculiar L shape and the circular shaped huts. The object-based method was able to correctly classify about 19% of, of the manually interpreted feature. So, in conclusion, this paper has outlined two strategies for the uh, uh, semi-automatic extraction of archaeological feature from multispectral data comparing the result of pixel and object-based approach to feature extraction in the same archaeological environment. Both the approach outline ideal and also have the ability to export the result in vector-based GIS compatible formats. However, as here demonstrate the use of an automated classification algorithm as a complete substitute for manual interpretation would result in a series of errors. The final outcome is even more critical considering the pixel-based classification, where a number of archaeological buildings have not been classified in the correct way. The main issue deals with the difficulty in separating, using just the spectral signature, the lava rock from archaeological structure made by lava stone walls. In addition, many variables and environmental conditions greatly reduce successful classification rates. In the object procedure, just few of the archaeological buildings remaining hard to recognize, while most of them were detected correctly. The post-dictive approach with target detection and classification of non-classes already in mind clearly helped in obtaining a good performance. 
So at least automatic identification of archaeological feature procedure provides a functional benefit in a time saving in, in a time saving perspective, reducing the necessity to manually digitize feature. In addition, rapid detection of potential objects of interest can be a perfect starting point for more detailed subsequent interpretation. Clearly, we need to create the general framework for archaeological feature detection in specific contexts, as per, for example, the volcanic one here presented, without having to completely rewritten the general structure. And in conclusion, with the Bob Dylan citation uh, quoting, uh, how many roads, uh, we can say, must computer rate archaeological feature detection routine walk down before we can consider a useful application in the archaeological interpretation toolkit? And with this, the uh, question.